My idea of a perfect date is spontaneously going skydiving. Um, that sounds awesome. Right? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> it's gonna be just like yeah. a lot of that. Um, So I've had people tell me before, oh, you look like such a sweet, good little girl. And then like, I, I go off on people or I'm like, let, let me tell you about this. They piss me off and they get a little bit surprised because um, I don't always seem as sweet as I am. I like to think, I hope I'm a really nice person. Um, I just don't like to take shit from anybody. <laughs> I'm wearing this wig today and I wear wigs sometimes just in my life because it's, uh, it makes me feel good. When I first meet people and I have a wig on, they're usually like, uh, oh, so what's with the hair? And I'm like, it's cute, isn't it? I also like it because it sort of, to me, I hope to encourage people to get beyond it, you know? Yeah, it feels great. You should wear a wig sometime, you know? Really, it's freeing. It's like being naked, but not, it's bizarre. All right, your name is Alice, and this is your story. You're 26 years old. For work, you're an educator. You grew up in the South, and your cultural, ethnic background is American. Uh, my name is Virginia, and this is my story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 29 years old. I actually uh, work in tech at a university here, so kind of education. And um, I grew up out in the country, rural Acadia Parish, and my cultural and ethnic backgrounds are Native American, Cajun, and white, ambiguous American, I guess. Mm -hmm. Your name is, <laughs> forgive me, I don't know, Keith. <laughs> 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 yeah, and this is your story. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm really bad with names. <laughs> I'm with you. It's okay. Okay. Um, you are 30 years old. For work, you're an artist. You grew up in the country, and your cultural or ethnic background is mixed or Creole. Okay. Yeah. Um, you just hit them all on the nail. What? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Yamil. I'm 35 years old. For work, I am a filmmaker and I clean houses. Uh, I grew up in Miami and I am Puerto Rican, which has, I mean, some Creole in it. Yeah, yeah. Saying? Yeah, that was good. Wait, I was curious. Why did you think I grew up in the country? I don't know. I kind of, I guess, like, the hair made me think that you were like the youngest and you were like rebellious and you came from like a really straight laced upbringing and you're like, I'm going to do my own thing. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was art directing this music festival in Miami and uh, I was working uh, in an environment with a lot of money and like a, a lot of sort of money hungry people uh, in Miami and I wanted to work for no money and just have my hands as deep in the earth as possible. And so then I decided to wolf and that led me to a farm in the Lower Ninth. The Ninth Ward is part of Orleans Parish. Uh, the Lower Ninth is sort of what was really hit by Katrina. And then I, it just so happened it was Mardi Gras and I walked around and was like, okay, I'll stay here. For a very long time, I didn't feel like I was enough. And in the last few years, I don't know what it is. I guess it's like, it's your 20s, right? When you come into your own skin and I'm like, you know what, I'm pretty cool. And um, I like myself a lot. And if other people don't, then that's okay. I might not like them either, but we can all live on the same planet together and not, you know, kill each other. It's a really good feeling to just be like, you know what, I'm just gonna be me and um, the world can deal with it. Your first job was probably at home. You probably had 
you were probably like me, like you had to, to work and do your chores and take care of stuff. Your idea of a perfect date is probably something laid back where you can talk to somebody and get to know them with no pressure. So not at all like this. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had an alter ego, they'd be named Alice. Ooh, <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, my first jobs were definitely at home. I mean, that was, that was real. Uh, but my first job was uh, being a children's party clown in the Miami summer heat. It was awesome. crazy. My idea of a perfect date is spontaneously going skydiving. Um, that sounds awesome. Right? Yeah. Ah, it's gonna be just like yeah. a lot of that. Um, if I had an alter ego, it would be called Penelope. So, I mean, you're definitely in the right direction <laughs> there. Um, okay, let's turn it around on you now. All right. Your first job was at a restaurant, like your first like making money job. Your idea of a perfect date is really good food, dinner, and then maybe some dancing. And I this this is this is like a long shot, but if you had an alter ego, uh, they'd be called uh, Dance Trans Hood Medallion. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's. I just you know I I I'm just getting to know you right, right now. Right, right. Like we could work. I... But I just feel like there's this this like non-tech world side of you. Oh, hell that, yeah. Like, let's <laughs> just, you know. Tech just pays the bills. Right, yeah, I got a, just got a feeling. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, so my first paid job, I think I got paid like a dollar by my grandparents to hang up uh, dry cleaning bags at their dry cleaning plant when I was like three or four. That's so, awesome. yeah. My idea of a perfect date is actually like not really even a date, just like, I think going out and doing something with someone that has meaning and just seeing how they are in real life. Um, so um, one time I went out and um, this guy that I really liked at the time uh, mm. came and planted native trees and stuff with me as part of like mm. this kids group uh, with the United Home Nation to teach the kids about our native plants. And um, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So, so yeah. Definitely not what I wrote down. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> Despite the appearance, and because I work in tech, like I'm really not a tech person. It's not what I study. Right. I'm actually kind of really a hippie at heart. And if I had an alter ego, I don't know, but one other name that I do like to go by is my native name that my uncles gave me when I was a baby, which is Bijahoya, and that's Muskoki. It means dove. Bechahoya? Bechahoya. Bechahoya. That's lovely. Yeah, that's a great name. <laughs> Rock that at the tech house, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. When things get a little difficult in a relationship, I tend to sort of retract and, and go in. I just had this conversation today with like, the idea of like committed relationships uh, and like sort of realistic models on how to have that be something sustainable. If sort of I've been conditioned to thinking there's a certain way to do this, do I know even how to communicate enough with myself to be able to communicate with somebody else to have like, you know, a committed relationship that'll last more than three and a half years, which seems to always kind of be like my expiration date. As I grow, I mean, that's one of the biggest challenges of relationships. Yeah, it's that communication thing I was talking about, learning how to really listen to somebody else's truth and understand that it's not yours and, um, you know, approach situations with compassion and try to check your ego. Everybody always wants to know how much Indian you are. And blood quantum is a European social construct that really doesn't fully encompass identity, but was something that was super handy for basically um, getting us down on paper and then committing slow paper genocide by saying, well, you're not really Indian enough to be Indian. So people would always ask me how much I am. And I would even get told sometimes by people, you're not enough to count. You're just like, you're white. Like everybody's mixed in South Louisiana. You're not enough to count. And um, it really caused at a young age, um, 
me to question my identity. And I felt at some points growing up that I had to go as white because I felt like I didn't have the right to identify as Native because I wasn't enough. You are not ready to settle down with me. <laughs> you do believe in a strict upbringing. You do not believe in soulmates. I just feel like anybody after high school has to realize that it's just not that simple, I feel. It's just like, it seems like such a hallmark concept that's just not uh, profound enough for, you know, our spirit's journey. You know, I don't know, it's just me though. Obviously, I guess now you know how I feel. <laughs> um, and a deal breaker uh, in a relationship for you is this person not embracing your culture. I do feel like I'm ready to settle down with somebody. Um, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, well you see, it was confusing. I know, it said yeah. them and I was like. Like them and you, like, and yeah. I, I mean, we can't settle down just yet. You know right, what I'm saying? I know, like, I know. We, like, we need to know, like there's, there's, at least know each other maybe 30 more minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my last name, you know, we gotta get that you too. Know, a little, you know, just a yeah. little background. I do and I don't believe in a strict upbringing. I think that it's really important that you teach kids certain values, like how to be self-starters and how to be good people, but I also think that there needs to be a lot of freedom mm. for them to decide um, who they are, to find out who they are, mm -hmm. and explore that and really be able to embrace that. When you, I think of like really strict people, I think of like, I guess, military style, right. where there's not like individualism. And um, I think it's really important to listen to your kids about who they are and what's important to them. I do believe in soulmates. Oh. And one of my biggest deal breakers is someone that um, I can't feel at home with in my soul and that mm. I don't, uh, feel really loves me for every part of me and who I am. Mm. I put that you are ready to settle down with someone, but you're hesitant to deep down inside and you don't, something is stopping you. Oof. Okay. Um, <laughs> Going deep. And I put that you do not believe in a strict upbringing for kids as long as they're good people. Mm -hmm. um, I put that you do believe in soulmates. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I also, I put the same deal breaker that for you, a deal breaker would be someone you can't feel at home with in your soul. Mm -hmm. Those are really lovely. Whew. I mean, it's not that I don't believe in soulmates. I just, like, and I'm so romantic. It's just like your heart, you know, you just like go yeah. through so much and then you're just like, oh, I thought that was it. Yeah. Whew. So, um, it's funny because I was going back and forth and I, I put, I am not ready to settle down because I was like with you right now. I was like, oh, we can't <laughs> yeah. settle down, Awkward. you know? Um, but I mean, I, I, I am definitely, I feel like, yeah, I'm getting a dog. I want to like anchor. I, I did put that I believed in a strict upbringing just because my parents were, and, and not like, they, they, I mean, they were like strict. Yeah, they were like, no, you're not gonna eat sugar. You know, you're gonna eat, healthy food, you know, mm -hmm. you're not gonna watch TV, you're not gonna own an entertainment, like a video game thing, yeah. you know, and like, and I feel like all of those things, even though at the time they were like the things that I hated most in the world that they just wouldn't let me do, I think it's made me sort of a more connected person to yeah. the, the world that I care for, you know. Um, soulmates, that's a complicated one, um, <laughs> but I did put that I did not. Uh, and I put the same deal breaker, just uh, not in embracing my culture, just because it's not necessarily, I guess, like, you know, my cultural background, but, you know, sort of like my friends and, and uh, you know, I, I associate with a lot of very alternative people, you know, that are really sort of breaking a lot of things down and like, you know, and I think that's important to embrace, you know.
first saw you, I thought I would not date you. Mm. Now that I've gotten to know you, I still would not date you romantically, but we could definitely have <laughs> friend dates and go skydiving and eat oh, plantains. Oh, wants to go skydiving. Virginia, when I first saw you, I thought I would date you. Really? I mean, why not? Okay, you know? fair enough. Um, and now that I've gotten to know you, I I still would. Aww. Um, happy face. Aww. To show my artistic side. That's a very artistic <laughs> happy face. It is, it is. Um, but what's great is that I am probably one of the coolest friends you could ever have. Awesome. So, there's a party tonight, you should come. I'm trying to get the director on board too. What? So we can maybe make it like a whole group thing. Hell yeah. Yeah. May I? We do some hugs and shit. Yeah. Oh. We'll I hang said out later. A bad word. Oh, I Which is another thing actually. I curse like a sailor. It's really so bad cake. Thanks for watching Tell My Story. If you wanna see more awesome content like this, go ahead and subscribe to Soul Pancake.